Hi, this is Talon Jane. This is FTT 211 Week 3 Project, uh, which the practical application for this week is the bluing or browning of the muzzle loader barrel. So this is, I think, part eight or so of the muzzle loader lab. Um, so as per usual, if you've been watching my videos for any length of time, you know that I very rarely uh, go to the minimum and usually make things way extra on myself and uh, this week was no exception um, I went ahead and did something a little bit different I didn't want to just do the browning of the barrel and instead I decided I was going to do a true uh, rust bluing and I was able to achieve this using hydrogen peroxide and a uh, heating chamber and a steam chamber and a steam, you know, heater and you'll, you'll see. Um, this is the first time ever where I'm recording my intro bef after I've actually done the project. So uh, this is the finished product of my barrel. So as you can see, I was able to achieve a really, really nice dark deep bluing on this. Um, and this was done entirely with hydrogen peroxide as the rusting agent and steam as the um, conversion process. So uh, before I go ahead and move on to the rest of this video where you'll be able to see how I achieved this, uh, I'm going to go ahead and kind of explain some of the science behind what's actually taking place when you're rust bluing a barrel. All right, so what we're doing when we're creating a red or a blue, uh, in other words, the plum brown or the um, black oxide blue of a rifle uh, or any gun part is we are dealing first with the iron in the barrel, okay, or in the barrel of this particular firearm. Okay, now I used hydrogen peroxide, which is H2O, which you recognize as water, two, right? So that's the hydrogen peroxide, okay? So what I did was, in order to create red rust, or red oxide, Red oxide is iron three times and oxygen three times. So what happens is when you put the hydrogen peroxide on the iron, it borrows the oxygen off of the, it borrows the one of the oxygen off of the hydrogen peroxide, leaving the remainder of just water and iron. So um, basically that's how we end up with the Fe3 O3, uh, which is the red oxide, okay? Now when you boil red oxide, when you boil, come on, red oxide in water, H2O, okay? What you do is you borrow another oxygen off of the H2O, okay? And that creates Fe3. 304, which is your black oxide. Okay, this was my eventual goal, was black oxide. Okay, now instead of boiling, I used steam because I didn't have the, uh, the right size pot in order to do this. Okay, so the process of doing this, of taking iron, using hydrogen peroxide to create rust, and then steamy that in order to create the black oxide and you do that it took me three times of going through this process um, basically once you get to this point you would card it with the carding wheel and then uh, start over back up at the hydrogen peroxide now the cool thing is is when I was doing this I would notice that each time I went through the hydrogen peroxide created less and less of this rust of the um, of the red oxide. Uh, in other words, it was developing that protective rust 
uh, proof proof layer on it, okay? Um, and that's how I was able to get it. So on the third time I did this, I hardly got any red oxide. Uh, so that's how we're going to end up getting this. This is the reason why I chose to blue instead of plum brown. I really wanted the barrel to match the action, the lock. So if you can see here, um, I'm really happy with how closely these two match now. So with that being said, we'll go ahead and get out to the shop and you'll see the whole process. Thanks for watching. Hey, we're out at the shop and we are about to blue this barrel, not brown it. So uh, there's a lot of different ways to treat a barrel. The product that the school sent us is called Express Brown Number no. 2. And I looked up a bunch of the reviews and stuff. People really like it. Um, I just don't want to do brown. So, and I'm pretty sure I could use this to, um, to blue as well if I heated it afterwards, but I'm not going to. Okay, so that's number one product. Number two, earlier in the curriculum, the school sent us this perma blue. Uh, this is a liquid gun blue, it's a chemical. I can't remember what they use. Oh, what chemical they use. I'll stick it up right there, boom. Whatever that is. Um, this is great for touch up stuff. I There's some videos on YouTube of people doing their entire firearm in it. There's a reason why the good gunsmiths don't use this for everything. And that's because it is a look, it's not an actual protective layer, okay? So what are we actually going for? Well, we're, when you're bluing or browning or plum browning or, you know, whatever, you're actually rusting the barrel. And uh, browning, is a red oxide on the outside of the barrel and bluing is a black oxide on the outside of the barrel. And you can convert red oxide into black oxide whenever you uh, heat it. Okay, so um, most of the time you'll see, if you're talking about professional level, you'll see people using dip tanks and they boil the barrel afterwards. Now I went through and tried to look into uh, ordering dip tanks. They run about $150 um, on Brownells. There it is right there. Uh, or, you know, you can, um, you can have a made and I called some sheet metal places around where I'm at and they all use galvanized. And um, if you heat galvanized metal, it puts off a toxic fume and these are all gonna be heated. So I didn't wanna do that. So uh, so for this, um, I'm gonna do something I saw on another channel. And so I'll give them credit right here because I can't remember the name of the channel, but he's got a great channel where he restores a lot of old firearms. And he does a particular method of bluing um, that I'm going to kind of mimic um, do a little bit different than he does. He uses uh, Oxfo Blue um, to rust blue his barrels. I'm gonna use something else. I'm going to go a little bit primitive here and we're gonna use hydrogen peroxide. This is uh, just your generic hydrogen peroxide. You get this at the dollar store, you get it at the, the um, you know, like a pharmacy or whatever. Uh, this is 3%, so this is 3% hydrogen peroxide, and to prep the metal, I'm going to use muriatic acid. Okay, this is an old bottle. I use muriatic acid to create ferric chloride, which is what I etch knives with. So um, I already had some muriatic acid. You can buy this at the hardware store. Uh, it's for etching concrete. And I'm going to uh, prep the barrel uh, using the muriatic acid. And then we're going to take the hydrogen peroxide to rust the barrel. And then we're going to stick that into a heated chamber. Um, I've been working all week trying to build a tall oven 
that I could heat the barrel in and use for Cerakoting and stuff like that. And I got almost all the way done, but it doesn't work yet. So um, it'll still work as a chamber. I'm just gonna use a little portable heater uh, to, to stick into it. Now, for those of you that don't have access to something like that, uh, the channel that I showed earlier, uh, he uses a, a um, UPS box, like, or not UPS, U-Haul uh, box, the wardrobe style, and he heats it the same way I'm going to with a portable space heater, and it works just fine. So I'm hoping that I'll be able to retain, you need it about 110 degrees, so it's not nearly as hot as what we were going for with the Express Brown. Um, so what that's doing is just raising the barrel above the dew point. And now um, we need to get it, uh, instead of boiling it, we're going to steam it. And to do that, we're going to use this device that I built this week. So what this is, is the lid to a pan on top of a toilet flange with a three inch uh, outside diameter toilet flange. That goes into a six inch piece of PVC pipe with the hole cut at the end there. That is going to go onto a bucket filled with water. We're gonna stick that down on there and we're gonna use a hot plate. We're gonna heat that water till it starts steaming and then we'll be able to lower the barrel down into this, using this, and uh, basically it'll it'll go down in there. That steam will sit, will sit for about 45 minutes. We'll cap it, cap this off, just like that. And uh, that should convert the red oxide that we got from the hydrogen peroxide into the black oxide. Um, then we're going to cart it off. We're gonna cart it off using, um, uh, you can use steel wool like this, the 4 aught steel wool. However, uh, I recommend you purchase one of these. This is a carding wheel. It is not a wire wheel. It's, it's very soft. Um, this is a four strand carding wheel. I got this from, um, not Brownells, Midway USA. Uh, they're about 35 bucks or whatever. Um, and then I drilled out the hole to make it a little bit bigger, put it on a 5 8 uh, shaft, and then uh, routed that down to um, half inch so that I could put it into a drill press. I bought a buffer so I could use this on the buffer and the buffer spins way too fast. You don't want this to spin very fast, so a drill press is actually better. So this will go on to the drill press. It's a nice thick shaft, will keep it from bending. So we'll use that. Um, the school tells you to heat up your your uh, your barrel using the heat source provided. This is your heat source provided, or whichever one you got with your class. Uh, that's gonna take a long time to get your barrel up to the proper temperature. I recommend if you're going to heat your barrel and do this, that you go down to your hardware store, pick yourself up a little propane heater and use that to heat your barrel. Uh, I think that's pretty much it. This is not a once and done process. Uh, we're going to basically be bluing, or we're gonna be browning, rusting, heating, steaming, carding, and then doing it all over again, probably five or six times. So uh, until we re achieve that kind of even layer of uh, the black oxide, uh, coating over the, the whole barrel. Now, you're gonna need something to support your barrel while you're working on it. Um, and you're also going to need to make sure that you get out any scratches or uh, anything that you put in during this whole process. Um, you could do that with just some, you know, the 4 aught steel wool. You can use the uh, some sandpaper, like a 400, 500, 600 grit. Uh, but you need to get that out because this bluing will not hide that stuff. It will just show it up in blue. So um, for my barrel holding device, you can get one of these little vices from Harbor Freight. Um, 
pick yourself up a big long clamp like this. And when then take the little brass piece that they used for last week's assignment, stick that in the barrel backwards so that the point is sticking out. And then you should be able to kind of line this thing up here. Oops. There's another scratch I gotta buff out. And then tighten this down. And what this will do, if you've got these rubber pieces on the end, they'll give you full access to the barrel, but you can also spin it a little bit, you know, because of that brass piece and because of this end piece here. That'll give you full access to the barrel. You'll be able to work on it and, uh, and get it done. So with that being said, um, first thing you're going to see me doing is getting rid of all these scratches. Then we'll do the muriatic acid. I'll be using these paper towels here. It's important when you're working with an acid that you test the material you're going to use and make sure that the material doesn't, uh, like <laughs> isn't affected by the acid. So I already checked with that, uh, with those paper towels and they're not affected. So we're gonna use the muriatic acid. First, I'm gonna use acetone, wipe that down. Then we use the muriatic acid just to open up the pores. Then we're gonna use the hydrogen peroxide to rust it. And I'll zoom in when I'm doing the hydrogen peroxide so you can see how fast that works. So here we go. That is 600 grit. I'm just gonna use a small piece of uh, cotton cloth. Get this good and saturated. And away we go. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but it's already kind of turning like a gold color. You see the rust coming off on the shirt.
I don't know how well that's showing up on the camera. All right, a little embarrassed that it's not all finished, but either way, we're gonna use this for the rest of this process. So this was a double oven that I've converted into a single oven that's tall. It's 40 inches tall, so it can hold all of that stuff. I have two dry heaters heating up this box right now because the oven didn't get working in time, but that's okay, we'll get there. Uh, for right now, what I'm trying to do is get this inside up to about 110 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and hang the barrel in there and let it come up to temperature. Once it does come up to temperature in there, I'm going to swap out the heat source with a steam source, which is just your normal childhood, um, what do they call them, humidifier, you know, like if you're sick or whatever. Uh, so we're gonna use that to introduce steam and then we're gonna let it sit inside of here for 45 minutes under steam. Uh, but the first thing we gotta do is get the barrel up to 110. What that does is it raises it past the dew point so that water droplets don't adhere to the metal and we don't get a weird kind of like texture on the metal. We get a nice even. All right, so we got the heaters in there. We got the barrel hung in the middle and we're just gonna let this run for about 10 minutes to get that up to temperature. All right, so we're sitting at about 110, 114, 110. So we're good to switch over to our steam method now. So it needs 10 minutes to start producing steam. We're just going to, I'm going to raise this up. All 
All right, so that's gonna produce steam inside the box. Needs 10 minutes to heat up. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it for an hour total and we'll be back. All right, just a quick check. Uh, we're gonna open this up. You can see the steam in there. We're starting to get some real good rust going on this thing. Perfect. I'm gonna let that go for about another hour and then we're going to, uh, I'm gonna let it sit overnight and uh, we'll get back at this in the morning. And there is our rusted up barrel here. I don't know if you can tell on camera, but there's a just a real light, almost fuzz on the whole thing. So next thing we're going to do is put this into our steam chamber. So, all right, we've got a rolling boil going in our uh, steam pipe here. Um, super hot inside of there. So we're going to take our barrel, a rusted barrel. We're going to lower it down inside of here. And we're going to let that sit about I'm gonna say an hour but I'm really guessing so um, the goal is that when we take this back out of here it should be like black in color we're converting the red oxide into black oxide all right it's been one hour uh, full disclosure I had one catastrophic failure it tipped over, I had to put it back up, I strapped it to the end of my um, table saw here just to give it the, a little more stability. So I have not looked at this, I have no idea what it looks like, so we're going to find out together if uh, we're able to turn our red oxide into black oxide. Now we're going to take it out. We're going to let it cool. I'm going to hang it back up over at the um, oven just so that it can uh, cool down and then we'll cart it off. So here we go. Um, if I didn't mention it before, you know, there's a plug in the end of the barrel and a plug at the top there. Where's the camera? just a little cork in the top that can basically keep the inside of the barrel clear from rust. So what I will do um, after this cools down is I'll swab out the barrel just to make sure uh, that it stays clean and clear and rust free. So I'll go ahead and let this cool down. All right, so that was our first carding layer. You can still see there's some discolorations, uh, but we definitely darkened it. So uh, now we start the whole process over again. It's important to note too that um, whatever color we want, it's gonna be darker after we put it in the oil afterwards. So, one test of our methodology here is that each time I apply this peroxide, it should 
rust slower and be more difficult to take on that rust color because I'm adding that protective layer of rust each time. So like last time how it turned gold pretty much immediately, this time it should take it should be a little bit harder for it to achieve that. I'm getting a lot darker. That's our second run through. About to card it off. I wasn't initially going to film this part, but when I started reapplying the hydrogen peroxide for this third time, I noticed that it's not really taking a rest. So uh, what that means is we've accomplished what we were going for, which is creating a, uh, a rust barrier uh, on this barrel. So uh, it took two times really um, to get a nice deep dark, you know, kind of blackish bluish color. This third time, we're just making sure there's nothing we missed, but honestly, um, I think I probably could have stopped here because the more I'm wiping this, the more I'm realizing it's it's not it's not taking a rust the same way it was before. So uh, that makes me real happy. I'm really liking the color. You know, I think it has a more natural kind of old fashioned look to it. So. We'll go through the whole process one more time and then uh, I'll bring you back when we get to um, ready to put it into the oil. Well, we're here finally, uh, three rounds later, three rounds through the whole process. Uh, I can't recommend this in good faith to you uh, just because it is a very, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Involved process. However, I'm really happy with the result that I was able to get. And I don't know how much of it's showing up on camera. I'll, I'll include some pictures here at the end. But all I'm going to do now is uh, heat this up a little bit. And then I'm going to drop it into this tank right here, which is a piece of vertical PVC. Um, it's got roughly two gallons of kerosene in it. Uh, so Larry Potterfield, he stated that um, any gun oil will work. Um, however, you know, I've been following a little bit different guidance and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stick with following that guidance. Um, and that is to use a non-detergent, non-gun oil based uh, oil for this first bit. The reason I'm heating it up uh, is just, it's what makes sense to me. I'm gonna heat it up to about 150, 200 degrees before I put it in the kerosene. I think that'll kind of open its pores just a little bit and allow it to kind of take in that oil a little bit more. Um, 